Hey guys, this is Sahiti from Edureka and today we will be learning about microservice architecture. So before I start with the session, let's take a look at today's agenda. Initially, we will start talking about the previous system that was the monolithic architecture followed by its challenges. Then we'll jump on to the functionalities of microservices and the best practices to design them. After going through all the concepts, we will go through a real life use case of Uber and understand them better. So let's get started with the session. What do you think monolithic architecture was? Well, I could say that it was like a big container where all the software components of an application were tightly packed together. Have you got any idea how the applications on this framework worked, how they looked like, how they performed, how they communicated with each other and so on? Let's look at the client server model shown here. What do you see as a user? As a user, when you open a web UI, you just see a website. But behind the scenes, the server side application has different features which have to be handled together. Features such as handling HTTP requests, retrieving and updating the data from database and executing a domain specific logic were put on a single framework. So, if any one feature of this server-side application had not worked, then the complete system would go down. Also, if only any one feature had to be updated, then the complete system had to be built again. Now, let's understand more about monolithic architecture by using a shopping cart application for reference. As a user, when you open a shopping cart application, what all do you see? You see different features for handling wish lists, new labels, new brands in the markets, customer services, and so on. But if the developers of this framework had decided to build this application on a single framework, then all the features were put together on a single database. This not only created problem for scalability, but also for fault tolerance and agility. Let's understand these challenges one by one specifically. The first challenge that we are going to talk about is agility. Let us consider an asset management industry. Here, different clients come with different investments who have to be offered different services. So, if any new services had to be given to any new clients or any new changes had to be made, do you think monolithic application could accommodate these changes? Well, I would say it definitely could. But yes, there's a problem here. The problem is here it could accommodate the changes but at the cost of reduced agility. Why do you think this happened? This happened because even if a small component in an application had to be changed, the entire application had to be repackaged together. Let's look at the second challenge. Consider yourself as a developer now. So if you had built any application, you would obviously want it to scale as per the future trends. But if you had built this application on a monolithic architecture, how do you think you could keep up with the scalability? Well, let's take an example. Our shopping cart application is built on a monolithic framework. Now, consider three customers come onto the application. Just to accommodate these three new customers, three instances of the same application have to be created. Also, apart from the three new instances of the application, resources also get wasted for the services which need not have to be scaled. Let us now look into the third challenge which is fault tolerance. Consider your shopping cart application for reference. Suppose even if one feature of the application doesn't work, then the entire system goes down. This not only creates a problem for the users but also creates a problem for the developers as they have to rebuild it again. So, to avoid these challenges, developers of these applications decided to shift from monolithic architecture to microservices. Now, many questions may come onto your mind such as what were the advantages of new architecture, how could the developers benefit from the new architecture, what were the new challenges that were faced with this architecture and so on. Let's discuss each of them one by one. Let's start with what were microservices. Microservices are basically an architecture wherein a monolithic application is decomposed into small and micro applications which were packaged and deployed independently. Consider your shopping cart application for reference again. Imagine now that developers of this application have shifted its framework from a monolithic to a microservice architecture. So this is how the architecture looks like now. Even now, as a user, when you open a shopping cart application, you just see features put on together on a single website. Now, there are separate teams handling different features. 
that means there's a team of developer handling deal of the day a team of developers handling new labels a team of developer handling customer services and so on all teams now write codes for their features only making it easy to deploy individual features again and again whenever it is required how do you think these individual separate deployable units communicate with each other well these separate individual deployable units communicate with each other through a well defined interface of rest or message bus by now you must have understood what were the functionalities of microservices and how they communicated with each other Let's learn more about microservices by looking at different components of its architecture. Well, the architecture starts with different clients from different devices trying to perform different management capabilities such as build, search, notification and so on. Then, each and every functionality is segregated into separate microservices handling their own data. For example, microservice A could take care of search operation Microservice B could take care of build operation, microservice C could take care of notification feature and so on. All these individual microservices had their own load balancing and execution environments to perform different functionalities and capture their own data. These individual microservices then communicated within themselves through the rest or message bus to perform different operational capabilities such as automation and monitoring. Also the request of clients were passed on to the internal architecture through an API gateway let's summarize the difference between both the architectures before moving forward to the features of microservices and the use case so in short monolithic architecture had a single framework for all the features on a single database whereas microservice architecture had different microservices for each and every feature handling their own database Now what features made the developers shift from a monolithic architecture to microservices let's have a look at them the applications built using microservice architecture were easily built altered and scaled they focused on a single capability all the components could be easily replaced the teams work independently they allowed frequent releases of the software applications were treated as products there were no standardized patterns and most importantly all the features were quickly developed let's look into more of microservices and their implementation by using a real life use case of uber what do you know about uber well uber technologies is a global taxi technology company headquartered in san francisco united states operating in 633 cities worldwide Like many other startups, Uber also started its journey with a monolithic architecture for a single city. Let's have a look at this architecture. Initially, they had a REST API with which the passenger and the driver were connected. This means that the mobile API was connected to the REST API which was then connected to the monolithic architecture as a backend server. Also for people accessing through web UI, they were also connected to the same server. coming forward there were three more adapters which were used to perform different functionalities such as notifications sending mails or messages billing payment etc finally a mysql database to capture all their data so if you observe here all the features such as passenger management billing notification features trip management driver management were composed in a single framework This means that having one code base seemed clean at that time and solved Uber's core business problems which included connecting drivers with riders, billings and payments. But as Uber started expanding worldwide into many more cities, it continuously faced the problem of scalability and continuous integration. So, developers could not continuously build, test, deploy and release the software frequently as and when Uber started expanding. city wise throughout the world also adding new features and fixing bugs in a single repository became extremely difficult for the developers so to avoid such challenges uber decided to follow the lead of hyper growth companies like amazon netflix soundcloud and twitter and broke down its monolithic framework into multiple code bases to form a microservice architecture so this is how the new architecture looks like what do you think is the new change in the architecture Well, we could clearly see the introduction of API gateway which connected all the drivers with the passengers. 
Also, from the API gateway, all the internal points were connected such as passenger management, trip management, driver management and so on. So basically, anybody who connects to the API gateway gets automatically connected to all the microservices. Another change that we observe in this architecture is the introduction of individual separate deployable units. Here, this means that we can deploy this unit or this unit or any other unit without disturbing the others. Let me explain you this point with an example. Consider yourself as one of the developers of Uber. So now, if you want to change anything in the billing microservices, then you just have to deploy only billing microservices and do not have to disturb the others. Also, this kind of architecture helped Uber to scale its services individually. Let me explain you with an example. As we all know, the number of people searching for cabs are comparatively more than the number of people actually booking a cab and making payments. So, the number of processes working on the passenger management microservice are more than the number of processes working on the payments. Also, it was observed that even if any one feature was down, no other microservice would get affected. Therefore, developers of Uber need not build their applications again and again even if one microservice goes down. Now that you've seen a real-life use case of Uber, can you think of any best practices to design microservices? Well, let's have a look at them. Initially, separate the data store for each microservice. Then, keep the code at similar level of maturity. Now, after this, separately build each microservice according to its respective features and then deploy into containers. Lastly, treat the servers as stateless for communication. Now, let me just give you a quick summary of what all we discussed. We started with the understanding of what was monolithic architecture and its challenges. Then we went through the microservice architecture and understood the differences between both the architectures. After understanding the architectures, we focused on the features of microservices and discussed the best practices to design them. Then we compared Uber's previous framework to the present one and understood what made them change their architecture. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.